foundation before my home. His house withstood the storms. It takes investment, but it also takes priority in marriage today. Intentionality, we also say. You have laid down a foundation in your engagement, and so my only word of encouragement is, is now to do it in your marriage. To make sure that Jesus Christ, as the Bible says, is the chief cornerstone. And when you place Him there, you build everything else around Him. Another translation for that word is that the chief cornerstone is the last stone that you put in an arch. Maybe you had a tall arch for you, Andy, but there's a big arch. And as you leave your house and as you come back into your house, that your eyes would be focused at the highest point. Jesus Christ lifted high. See, you, you place him first and build everything else around him and place him last. So when you go and you come in, you exalt his name. We have great expectations for the two of you. We have great hopes for the two of you. We love your passion. We love your laughter. We love your joy. We love your story. We are here to celebrate what God has done, but we can't wait to see what God will do. Only by his grace will you build a home and build it, have rooms of faith, hope, and love. To God always be the glory. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. I'm going to ask you now to face each other for the vows of marriage. And this time, Andy, I'm going to give you words to, to speak, Jenny. I, Andy, take you, Jenny, to be my wife. And I promise before God and these witnesses to be your loving husband in plenty and in want, in joy and in sorrow, in sickness and in health, as long as we both shall live. Great job. Okay, Jenny, give these words to speak to me. I, Jenny, take you, Andy, to be my husband. And I promise before God and these witnesses to be your loving wife in plenty and in want, in joy and in sorrow, in sickness and in health, as long as we both shall. What do you bring as a sign of your promise here this evening? Let's pray for these rings in my hand. Oh Lord, we ask that you would bless these rings, and in giving them and in wearing them, Andy and Jenny may abide in your peace, continue in your favor, until their lives end. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray. Andy and Jenny, sometimes couples ask me, why the wedding bands? It's just another expense on the bill. I say, yes, <laughs> why not? No, I say, in every biblical covenant, there was a tangible sign of the promises that we made with God. Because God knew that we would actually forget. The, 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 the easiest one is, is Noah and this rainbow. Not so that we look for little green men in big pots of gold. So we would remember that God is faithful. When you wear these bands, maybe playing golf or working out or teaching kindergarten, people will know that what you are committed to one another. That you have pledged your life to another man, to another woman. Also, you will notice that when the storms do come, that God is faithful. He will see you through. And you'll remember this moment, the joy and the excitement you had. So Andy, as you take Jenny's ring, you place it on her finger, repeat these words to her. Jenny, I give you this ring as a sign of my promise. Very good. Jenny, as you take Andy's ring and place it on his finger, Andy, I give this ring as a sign of my promise. Very good. You can face me. Friends, we're now going to have a, a time of prayer. We will start with a moment of silence for for you to offer a prayer for this new couple. I'll break our silence with a spoken prayer, and then we will end by saying the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray together. Eternal God, 
Without your grace, no promise is secure. Strengthen Andy and Jenny with the gift of your Holy Spirit at this moment, throughout their lives, so, so that they may fulfill the vows they have taken here before you and these witnesses. Keep them faithful to each other. And Lord, keep them faithful to you. Fill them with such love and with such joy. They may build a home where no one, where no one is a stranger. And guide them by your living words so that they may serve you all the days of their lives. Oh Lord, take Andy and Jenny and truly make them one. And be with all of those here in this room who have entered into the covenant of marriage. Strengthen, renew, allow for those bonds to continue to have a spark of fidelity and joy. And may all your marriages, O oh Lord, be sanctuaries of your faith, of your hope, and your love. We ask all of this, Lord, in the powerful name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray by saying together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Andy, Jenny. I have some good news for you. By authority committed to me as a minister of Jesus Christ, I now declare that Andy and Jenny are now husband and wife. According to the ordinance of God and the law of the state of Tennessee, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Now I have a little announcement for all those present here. Following the service, we're going to have a trolley that's going to take everyone to Crescent Bend. That trolley is going to run until 11 o'clock. So we encourage you as you exit the sanctuary, just jump on that trolley and just and leave your cars parked here so we can all go and celebrate with Andy and Jenny. Become one. Fulfill your promises. Love and serve the Lord. And remember, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Andy, it's your big moment. You may kiss your bride. <laughs> Friends, it is my great joy for the first time to introduce to you Mr. and Mrs. Andrew Jones.